in the kinds of nationalism, we have the ethnic nationalism. So, alam na natin na ang tinatawag nating nationalismo ay isang sistema ng ideolohiya o paniniwala ng masa. Uh, how the Filipino or how the people believed in the strength, the power, the authority of a certain government or a certain state is what we call nationalism. And being loyal, okay, the belief of being loyal, sticking to its creed is what we call nationalism. So there are types of nationalism or kinds of nationalism. We have first the ethnic nationalism. Well, you have so many types of nationalism, but first we have what we call the ethnic. From the word ethnic, one, that is based on pre-existing culture, language, belief, and the way of life that is shared by common group of individuals seeking for national identity. In this particular kind of nationalism, it is the culture, the language, the practices of these people that bind, binds them. And it is their culture, okay, the belief on that culture, is a manifestation of what we call their nationalistic spirit. That is what we call ethnic nationalism. Now let's go to civic nationalism. Okay. Civic or civil nationalism is a group of or a political community of people who share common values and desire to unite together according to one specific goal, regardless of culture, language, or origin. Ibig sabihin, ito ay isang uh, paniniwala ng masa. Okay? Isang paniniwala, grupo ng paniniwala ng masa kung saan sila ay pinagbubuklod ng kanilang goal, ng kanilang purpose. Wala silang pakialam kung ang mga miyembro ng organisasyon or political community na yan ay mag-belonging to different types of culture. Wala akong pakialam kung ikaw ay Badjaw ka, you have a different type, ikaw ay Kalinga, ikaw ay Ilocano, ikaw ay Mangyan, eh? you speak uh, Chavacano. I don't care about that if you talk about civil nationalism. What we care about civic nationalism is that what we do, okay? we share something, we share the same goal and interest, and we are working as one to attain that particular goal, disregarding our differences in culture, language, or origin. Okay? Kalimbawa, yung uh, Save Mother Earth movement. Okay? It's a movement, meaning it's a nationalism. Yung paniniwala natin na kapag tayo ay namulot ng mga basura at nagkaisa para uh, i-maintain ang tinatawag nating kalinisan sa ating kapaligiran, okay? at lahat tayo na membro ng grupo ay araw-araw naglilinis. Okay? When we stay together in doing that, like for example there in the picture that I have in your screen, okay? Iyon ang tinatawag nating civic nationalism. So, it's for the service. It's for attaining some goals. It is a nation that is bound by creed to which the inhabitants render allegiance. Okay? Tree planting. Doing the tree planting, pagkakaisa sa pag-tree planting, that's a civic nationalism. We are trying to show our loyalty to our country by participating in that particular program. Okay? Why? Because we need to attain something. We have to show to the national government that our movement, our acts okay, in tree planting can really help the Philippines or the government itself economically, environmentally, and emotionally. Why? It can boost the emotions. Okay? It gives us the feeling to be proud of our own country because of that particular unity that we have in civic nationalism. Okay? What else? We have what we call the expansionist nationalism. Expansionist nationalism 
we a nation that is free and created by people with a strong belief of superior power. There are uh, members or there are political communities or groups which believe or who believe that their country is superior over other countries. They tend to show their nationalism by controlling other countries, like, for example, what we call colonization. When Spain colonized the Philippines, that is showing to the other states, to the other uh, nation, that they are powerful than any other states. They expand their territorial jurisdiction to the Philippines. Spanding or stretching the arms of your national government. Okay? That particular overt act the act of colonizing other places is a manifestation of a strong belief that your country is more powerful or superior than other powers or other national uh, governments. And that is attaining national greatness. Okay, yun yung purpose. Okay, what about romantic nationalism? This is number four, romantic nationalism. Okay, well, if you talk about romantic nationalism, you have to at least uh, consider what we call as the term romance or romantic, which means intimate. So there is a creation or, or there is a sense of intimacy between the belief of the members of this political community. Okay? The group thoughts and welfare is the concentration of this particular nationalism. They believe that political authority is a natural consequence of the union of its people. Okay? So sabi nila, uh, makukuha lang natin yung gusto natin kapag tayo ay nagkaisa. So let's establish. Okay? na yung authority ng bansang Pilipinas sa Limbawa ay nanggagaling sa pagkakaisa ng mga tao. We concentrate on the spiritual value of local customs, yung traditions natin. Okay? So, pinapangalagahan natin yung mga yon, yung mga spiritual values natin. It is inherited cultural patrimony from a common origin. Okay? So, you establish in, there is an intimate relationship between the members by virtue of their group thoughts for the welfare of the nation. And that they believe that their unity, them being united, is a consequence. Okay? That the political authority, I should say, that the authority or the power of that particular state is a result of the union of every member of that political community. Okay, next one is what we call cultural nationalism. Well, from the term cultural, we talk about already the practices, okay? the shared culture and traditions, languages of every particular individual. That is what we call as a cultural nationalism. So that would be number five, which is cultural nationalism. Now, what about the next one? We have what we call the third world nationalism. Well, when you talk about the term uh, third world, this is brings a something a negative connotation with respect to what we call as the third world countries. Okay. Minsan pag sinabi mong third world, uh, we are already talking about countries or states which are underdeveloped. These are states which are economically lesser or inferior than other states. Yan yung tinatawag nating uh, third world countries. This is actually connected with what we call as the idea of uh, civil peace. Okay? Ito yung nagtatag ka ng isang movement kung saan tinutulig sa mo yung pinapractice ng national government. Ito yung pagkakaisa eh, sa ideals 
and beliefs of a nation, okay, of nations, I should say, belonging to or being noted as underdeveloped countries. Okay, the belief of these underdeveloped countries okay, to fight for their own goals against the superior uh, what we call these countries. What is third world? It's, it is actually a segmentation that was used to describe the world's economies by economic status. Okay? Developing nations are closely watched by what we call as International Monetary Fund or the IMF. Diyan nila tinat, um, yan yung tumitingin kung sino-sino yung mga uh, third world countries. Okay, it's the World Bank and the IMF or the International Monetary Fund. Okay, they seek to provide global aid for the purposes of projects to help improve infrastructure and economic systems comprehensively for the underdeveloped uh, countries. Yan yung purpose naman ng IMF and World Bank. Okay, they try to segregate okay, or group into class the states accordingly by tinatawag natin first world, second world, and the third world countries. And third world countries are strictly being monitored by them because they wanted to give aid. Sila yung, sa, sa kanila nanggagaling yung pondo ng mga third world countries para sa mga proyekto to improve their economic status. Okay? So, first world countries were known as the most highly industrialized nations, okay, whose views are aligned with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or the NATO na tinatawag natin. At sila yung may uh, idea ng tinatawag nating capitalism or in Tagalog, kapitalismo. Okay? Second world countries are those which supported the communism. Mostly, those that have been doing this are uh, those members of the Union Soviet. Okay? East Asia, like for example, China, Taiwan, those are communist uh, countries, North Korea also. Okay, these are the second world countries. Third world, of course, those nations in Asia and Africa, which were not aligned with either the United States or the Soviet Union. Okay, so, pinakamababang klase, third world nation. Okay? But this, this, so, etong third world nationalism, ito yung paniniwala ng lahat ng mga bansa na underdeveloped. Okay? Ayun. Na ang gusto lang nila is to maintain civil peace. Okay? It's, the nationalist feelings are the outcome of opposition to colonial rule to survive and maintain a domestic identity. Okay? So, nakihingalo yung mga bansa na ito sa to survive okay, and maintaining the domestic identity. So, kailangan nila to oppose to, uh, other countries just to survive and to gain national identity. Okay. So, aside from third world nationalism, we also have what we call as the liberal nationalism. So, mer kung meron tayong tinatawag na traditional or classical nationalism that is a kind or ethnic nationalism that is the kind of nationalism in which we adhere to the, the classical or to the original way of life of the Filipinos or of our own country, then we have what we call liberal nationalism. So, what is a liberal nationalism? If you say liberal, you are tolerant. That's the, the literal meaning of the term liberal. You are tolerant, you accept the differences of ideas. Okay? Example, freedom of speech, freedom of choice. Here in liberal nationalism, members of the political community okay, had the freedom of choice. Kaya tinatawa siyang liberal. Okay? There is a personal autonomy of every member. Okay? There is self-respect and recognition can be attained not only by cultural membership, but also in political arrangements or domestic identity. That is the focus of liberal nationalism. Okay? They often defend the importance of domestic identity. 
So yung sinasabi nila is, okay, meron, bawat isa meron tayong kinatawag na freedom of speech, freedom of choice. So ito ang gusto namin, which is taliwas sa gusto ng nakakarami. Okay? So yung paniniwala nila na yun, ang tinatawag nating liberal nationalism. Although they accept the ideas of other kind of uh, states or other, other ideas of the national government, maybe of the same state or the other states, okay, that way, being tolerant to those things are being called as liberal nationalism. Okay. Philippines is what we call one of the Christian country, as we all know, in Asia. That is why our next is what we call the religious nationalism. Well, from the term uh, religious, we talk about religion. So, well, however, this actually is a connection to a specific religious faith, church, or affiliation. So, yung paniniwala ng isang religion, alimbawa, uh, pardon me, ah, hindi ito pang haharas o kaya pang pangungut siya sa ibang kinatawag nating religion sa bansang Pilipinas dahil ginagalang natin ang lahat ng religion. But for purposes of an example of this kind of nationalism, I would like to give an example. Yung tinatawag natin yung religion ng INC or religion ng uh, UCCP or religion ng Katoliko. Okay? So, there are so many religious institutions Right. There are many religious beliefs that we have as Filipinos. And all, yung paniniwala natin na mga yun, okay, ang nagdi-divide din sa atin minsan. Pero, at the same time, itong paniniwala natin na mga ito, ay siya rin nagbubuklod sa atin. Okay? In the attainment of peace, lahat naman siguro ng religion, gusto ng peace. Okay? Gusto ng katahimikan. Okay? So, yung movement, to maintain peace in order within the state. Okay? Because we believe that all Christians should be at peace. Yung mga ganun na paniniwala. It's a worldwide, uh, what we call this, goal. Okay? To attain peace in order within a state or within a nation. Okay? Using their own religion, the different religions, then that is what we call religious nationalism. Okay? Shared religion ko. So, ibig sabihin, itong nasyon na to ay binubuo ng paniniwala sa isang religion. Okay? Religious uh, beliefs. Hindi man iisa ang paniniwala. Okay? But all of these movements, which attains or, or which purpose is to attain one goal, is what we call religious nationalism. But we were, because we also have what we call as uh, Article 3, Section 6, the separation of the church and the state, okay, which is inviolable within our uh, constitutional law. Ibig sabihin that the church cannot intervene into the political affairs of the state and at the same time or in the same way that the church or that the state, I should say, cannot also intervene with the religious affairs of uh, any religious congregation or institution. Okay? So that is the number eight kind of what we call nationalism. Next one, we have what we call as pan. Okay? What is the term pan means? Okay. Pan literally means criticize. So pan nationalism. This is actually a political community that is being formed by people who believe okay, in a particular idea that criticizes the national government or other states. Okay? So there is territorial expansion also here. It is a creation of nationalism beyond the traditional boundaries. Yan ang pan-nationalism. So, kinokontra mo yung paniniwala ng ibang bansa, yung movement ng ibang bansa. So, what did you do? You expand. Eh, yung expansionist kanina. You try to go beyond your territorial jurisdiction. 
dahil sa paniniwala mo yun na ikaw ang tama at sila ang mali. You are criticizing their ideas. Because of that criticism, lahat ng mga nag-criticize sa state na yan, nagkaisa at isang paniniwala nila. That is what we call as pan-nationalism. Okay? This is actually ethnic or cultural nationalism. Refers referring to a country that is itself a cluster of associated ethnic and cultural communities. Okay? So that is what we call pan. Remember that the word pan literally means uh, criticize. So number 10 is what we call the diaspora nationalism. So what is a diaspora nationalism? Okay? Diaspora is an ethnic population residing outside the traditional homelands. Halimbawa, ito yung mga tinatawag nating uh, yung mga OFWs. Okay? One of the example, OFWs. Filipina ka, OFW ka sa Saudi or nagtatrabaho ka sa Saudi. Pero ikaw na nasa Saudi at ako nandito sa Pilipinas ay parehas ng pinaniniwala, paniniwala at ipinaglalaban natin ang paniniwala natin yan. Pag binuo natin ng, na komunidad, okay? lahat ng mga tao na parehas natin ng paniniwala na saan man sila okay? ay bumuo ng isang political community, yun ang tinatawag natin diaspora nationalism. For as long as the purpose of that particular political community is to promote okay, loyalty to our own country, then that is what we call diaspora nationality. Okay? So, yan. Ang dami palang klase ng tinatawag nating nationalism. Now, is what we call, can you choose between the things that have been mentioned to you, yung tinatawag nating mga kinds of nationalism, kung ano yung gusto ninyong uh, type or kind of nationalism. So, hindi lang yun. Meron pa tin tinatawag na Stateless nationalism. Stateless. Kanina, binanggit ko class about a stateless person. If you are an stateless individual, you are an individual who is not a citizen or a national of any country. Okay? Walang nagmamayari sa'yo, wala kang tinatawag na ito ang bansa ko. Kasi stateless ka. Na pinanganak ka bilang Pilipino, dapat Pilipino citizen ka, pero nag... Uh, ayaw mong sumunod sa batas ng Pilipinas at hindi mo in-acknowledge ang Philippines as your country. For that reason, you have been disregarded or you have been, or your citizenship, Filipino citizenship has been removed from you. Okay? Then you become a stateless national. Now, what about stateless nationalism? Stateless nationalism, these are movements. Okay? Ito yung mga... A pangmasang paniniwala na hindi naka-acquire ng tinatawag nating national or international recognition. Okay? Wala, uh, hindi, hindi kinikilala internationally yung movement na yan. Yung ideolohya na yan. Okay? Well, these uh, are uh, the nationalist basis of this is ethnic or cultural minority within a nation state aims independence. Halimbawa, may paniniwala yung isang grupo, okay, pinaglalaban nila yun, pero dahil hindi nire-recognize ng national government yung pinaglalaban nilang ideolohya, then they are what we call as stateless nationalism. Okay? Stateless nationalism. Now, aside from stateless nationalism, we have what we call national conservatism okay. from the term conservative so this kind of nationalism national conservatism is what we call also the right wing okay it's a political term mainly used in europe to describe a version of conservatism that focuses more on domestic interests it preserves national interests instead of social order Okay, wala silang pakialam kung magkagulo for as long as okay, they will preserve the interests of the nation. Family values which regulate moral behavior. So, naniniwala ang national conservatives okay, or conservatism na yung family values natin okay, 
are the ones that are regulating our own behavior. How we act, how we express our loyalty to the country depends upon our family values. Yun ang tinatawag natin national conservatism. Now, what about revolutionary? From the word revolution, okay? So, revolutionary nationalism talks about the a united nationalist sense amidst revolution. Ito kasi yung mga movement nagsimula ang revolutionary nationalism nung nagkaroon ng hindi pagkakaintindihan sa paniniwala ng national government at saka ng mga uh, membro ng bansa. In times of war, in times of terrorism. Okay? So, yung paniniwala, yung parang, eto, like for example, the Abu Sayyaf. Yung mga Abu Sayyaf, mayroon silang pinaglalabang ideolohiya. Okay? At ayon sa kanila, yung paniniwala nilang yun ay uh, isang pinagpapakita, I should say, ay nagpapakita sa kanilang katapatan sa bansang Pilipinas. Yun ang sinasabi nila. That movement is actually what we call a revolutionary nationalism. Okay? That is an example of a revolutionary nationalism. But if you talk about revolutionary nationalism, be sure na yung pinaglalaban ninyong ideologya ay talagang para sa uh, pagpapakita ng honesty or loyalty sa bansang Pilipinas. Because otherwise, you cannot call that as nationalism. Well, you can call that revolution, okay, in, in revolutionary movement, but not part a movement that uh, qualifies as a manifestation of a nationalistic spirit. Kagaya ng Abu Sayyaf, we can call them as revolutionary uh, nationals. Okay? Kasi they are Filipino nationals. They are giving revolution, meaning to say they have the ideologies which is different from the national government. And they are fighting for that ideology. And so that is revolutionary ideology. But if the purpose is not really to manifest what we call honesty, loyalty to the Philippines, then we cannot call that act as an act of nationalism. Okay? So, ito yung tinatawag natin the so-called terrorist movement. Okay? Nabubuo usually yan kapag may hindi pagkakaintindihan ang national government o kaya ng ibang bansa sa ating bansa o kaya ng national government at saka ng kanyang mga tao. Now, let's go to the last type of what we call nationalism and that is what we call as the left wing nationalism. Okay, so ang dami. So this is actually the 14th kind of nationalism or 14th type of nationalism. So the left wing nationalism believes that uh, believes for national or I should say uh, self-determination. Left-wing nationalism also sometimes referred to as na socialist nationalism. Okay? A state is said to have the right of self-determination in the sense of having the right to choose freely its political, economical, social, and cultural systems. Okay? Kasi yung paniniwala ng left-wing nationalism, sabi nila lahat dapat ng tao ay may karapatan. Okay? for self-determination. Ibig sabihin ng self-determination is independence. Okay? Self-determination is defined as the right of people to constitute itself in a state or otherwise freely determine the form of its association with an existing state. Okay? Ito yung talagang naniniwala or pinaniniwalaan ng political community na ito or ng grupo na ito Okay, na dapat sila ay may kalayaan. Okay, kalayaan na dapat ay iniintindi ng national government. Okay? And that movement, that ideology is what we call the left-wing nationalism. Sometimes, the left-wing nationalism is also being intertwined or akin to what we call as the revolutionary nationalism. Okay, medyo may pagka- uh, similarity ang dalawa na klase ng nationalism. Okay. Now, 
With this respect, I would like to proceed already to what we